What's up, my meaty friends? This is Reed, aka Carnivorous Chef. I've been wanting to make this video for a very long time. In fact, I've had this in my list of ideas since the beginning of the year, but I was worried I'd not do it justice. I'm glad I finally overcame that thought and just dove into this one. But it was super tasty and plan on doing it again. So a little preface here. If you don't like pork rinds, you probably won't like this recipe. But if you have other ideas on how to make carnivore bread or make things crunchy, feel free to use those. I won't be offended. My southern blood just needs pork rinds every now and then to fortify it. Anyways, let's get started. For this recipe, I'll be using my carnivore bun from the Wendy's Baconator video. Grab yourself your favorite pork rinds and slap them into a blender and pulse a few times to make your own pork panko. Place a saute pan over medium high heat and add in six ounces of ground beef and brown. Once cooked, this should leave you with about four ounces of cooked ground beef. You don't have to do anything fancy to it because it'll be blended soon anyways. Speaking of blending, let's throw the following into a blender. Four ounces of cooked ground beef, one ounce of pork rind panko, three eggs, one ounce by weight of cream cheese, a quarter teaspoon of salt, and a half teaspoon of baking powder. If you made your panko yourself, just use the same dirty blender and once everything is added in, blend on low for about a minute and then scrape down the sides. Blend this again for about 30 seconds and set the batter aside. Grab a baking sheet and lay down a sheet of parchment paper. Next, we want to grab a greased ring mold and spoon in your batter until it's to the top of the mold. Place this into an oven at 375 degrees Fahrenheit for about 18 to 20 minutes or until well browned. I accidentally forgot to film this, but I added one and a half cups of whole milk, one egg, and a teaspoon of cayenne pepper to a bowl and whisked it together. This is stage one of our dredge for the chicken. For the second stage, grab a plate and lay down some of your pork peco and add in a quarter teaspoon of onion powder, a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder, and a quarter teaspoon of smoked paprika. Give this a little mix and then let's grab our chicken. This is a six ounce double lobe breast that I flattened out to about a half inch thick. Use whatever you want, just make sure you pound it out until it's about a half inch thick. Place this into your milk mixture and then let the excess drip off. Now, place this into your seasoned pork rinds and press it in. Now set this aside while we set up our spicy oil. In a heat safe bowl, add in one tablespoon of cayenne pepper, a half teaspoon of onion powder, a half teaspoon of garlic powder, and a quarter teaspoon of celery salt. You'll also need a ladle and a whisk nearby. For today, I'll be using duck fat to pan fry. Just fill up a saute pan with about a half inch worth of duck fat. Feel free to use tallow or lard here too. Turn the heat to medium high and sprinkle in a small amount of pork rinds to help you know when the oil is ready to use. Once those are bubbling, you can carefully place down your chicken away from you into the saute pan. I let mine cook for about six minutes total, being sure to flip every couple of minutes. You just want it to be golden brown and crispy. Now, grab your bowl of spices and add in half of the hot duck fat and mix it in. While we've been frying up the chicken, it's time to get our bun and split it. Take your crispy chicken and toss it around in this spicy, spicy juice. To assemble, you can optionally place down some pickles on the bottom bun, top that with your drippy chicken, top bun, and then some more pickles for presentation. My mouth is absolutely watering and this first bite is for my Patreon community. Now this thing is crunchy, like a deep fried sandwich, like it should be. So it's pretty successful. And you know what? You should make it. You should also like and subscribe.